Good day, Bob. First of all, thanks for agreeing to do this video interview with me over Skype. For our audience, could you please introduce yourself and tell us where you live and work and what you do? Certainly. Uh, thanks, guys. So appreciate being here. Uh, Bob Mosier, I am the CEO slash Chief Learning Evangelist. How's that for a title? Mm -hmm. uh, for a company called Apply Synergies, uh, I am based out of uh, lovely Fort Mill, South Carolina. And we, are, we focus on performance-based instruction, learning, and, and consulting. Excellent. Can you share with us, where'd you grow up and uh, where'd you go to college and what did you study? Sure. Well, uh, I'm down in the South for a reason, because I grew up in the North. And <laughs> at my age, I am done with the North, my friend. Grew up in, uh, bounced around between uh, Worcester, Mass., Buffalo, New York, and Rochester uh, growing up and went to school in Oswego State, a SUNY, SUNY college. And believe it or not, my degree was in elementary education of all things. Uh, but then went on to get my master's in Nazareth in, college, in uh, Rochester in uh, adult learning and computer science uh, teaching of all things. Mm -hmm. I've heard you tell some of this story before. So can you share with us a little bit more? So after college, what was your career progression until you got to uh, where you are right now? Yeah, you know, it's it's like like a lot of us in L and D, it's an interesting one, right? I mean, I I, I do start with L and D roots, uh, which I think you and I find a lot of our colleagues, frankly, don't, right? A lot are born out of the business, and then they find their way because they care and want to have an impact into learning. Well, I no, I was a diehard uh, learning guy. I my degree is in elementary ed, of all things, for five years in a small cow town south of Rochester, Warsaw, New York. I taught third graders. Um, got my master's in adult education and instruction. Honestly, really kind of planned on staying in that in the public ed, but uh, to feed my family and a couple other things, this really cool thing called a PC desktop uh, was born in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, small company, Logical Operations in Rochester, New York, was, uh, was nice enough to recognize my instructional skills and said, look, there's, there's a possibility people may need to use these things. And it was honestly, I rode that wave guy at the beginning of the whole IT certification, education. The first course I taught was Lotus 1, 2, 3, of all things. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and then here I am today after all that. So, uh, after that first job, what you've been at, you've been, you've worked at oh. some big companies. So, why don't you <laughs> share with us a little bit about that? Yeah, I have. Well, you know, it's been, it, it, I, my, as my mom says, you know, I don't know if I can keep a job, frankly, you know, <laughs> but, 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 you know, what, what really, it, and, and a lot of what we'll talk about today really is what's guided me in being here, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I've always been an unsettled learner and, and frankly was not comfortable with the status quo of what we traditionally call L&D, to be honest, guys. So, so I was blessed to be at, at Logical Operations for 16 years, probably the long, it is the longest place I ever stayed. Um, and they journeyed and were bought out and had a number of things. As the PC technology um, organization grew, a lot of you may know Skillsoft. That is ultimately who purchased that company. Um, and then along the way, I got, got, you know, I, I got a little itchy. You know, I wanted to get out of that more standard offering, you know, kind of thing. And, and IT, frankly, alone. Although, my next jump was to Microsoft. I was uh, Senior Director of Learning and, and Evangelism for Microsoft uh, for their global community for a while. I've been on the IT technology tool side. I worked for a company called Intuitive for a number of years where they sold a, a tool for performance-based instruction. That's really where I made my turn into this world. And then twice, here's the, you know, can't hold a job thing, it appears, but twice I've been in the consulting world, uh, which which the second of which was the birth of my company that we have today in, in Apply Synergies. Excellent. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit more about your first exposure to what uh, some people like me call HPT, Human Performance Technology, or however you refer to that? Yeah, well, personally, I love it myself, my friend. I mean, we, I think we hear it blurred with e-learning and other things, to be honest. I, my anxiousness about that is I don't know who really cares about that name anyway. Uh, and I love the pivot on performance, right? And so, it, it, yeah, my gosh, my friend, it goes back Boy, I don't know how far you want me to take you back. But for me, really, the itch started when I was asked in Oswego, New York, in 1982 to come in early in my student teaching days and set up the TRS-80 mm -hmm. guy, TRS-80, right? <laughs> yeah. This was my job. And this was my job, my friend. I literally had to put a cassette tape into a drive. And you're nodding, right? And yeah. I had to, this because the teacher didn't want to do this, I had to put the cassette tape into this darn thing and hit play. And that's really all I did. And, and then I sat there for half an hour while the program loaded. Mm -hmm. But but I go and tell you something. It, 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 this, now think about the time, 1982, 1981, right? It, I was like, what is this thing and why is it in a classroom? 
you know, and that was really the beginning for me of this technology enabled, even back then, idea that that these things, you know, hey, people may have these in their home someday, right? I mean, it was, I'd been a laser disc player, I've done the VCR, I've done, you know, each one of those things, my friend, through e-learning and the whole thing. Um, EPSS is my sweet spot now, but but really each one of those has has launched me into a different phase of my career. Thank you. So you mentioned EPSS, yeah. Electronic Performance Support Systems, for those of uh, who have missed that uh, turn of that phrase. Yeah. Um, talk to us a little bit about uh, who your biggest influences were in this uh, evidence-based practices for performance improvement through instruction and other means. Uh, who, who would you point to in terms of people or articles or books that had an impact on you? Yeah, you know, I, I really would, I, you know, I'd go back as far as um, Gloria Geary, my friend, right? She she wrote the the quintessential book, Electronic Performance Support Systems, was the name of the book, 1991, right? I just, I remember reading that book, my friend, and and just going, this is this is a brave new world. You know, I mean, I just, and, and, and for what I was challenged, frustrating with, frustrated with about formal instruction at the time, I was like, this is it. I mean, we have found... The tipping point. Now that was 1991, and here we sit. How many years later, right? But, and then I went on to another wonderful lady in my life, who hugely influential, Dr. Ellison Rossett, you know, who wrote uh, performance debate, uh, job aids and performance support. Another great book. Um, you know, each one of these took me an iteration deeper into this idea about how performance-based instruction and technology, frankly, and we'll talk about probably today. I think really is the tip of the sword. And I think in too many offerings, it's not. I think it's an add-on. It's uh, if you've got time. Um, I tell you, it has the last 10 years of my life since those ladies came into my life um, and, and, and others we'll, we'll probably talk about has really changed and kept me in education to be completely transparent because um, this is what I really want to do. Um, and secondly, it has proven to me, for your listeners, especially the new folks, that this can and is being done, guy. This is not Star Wars stuff. This is not someday L and D could do. Nope. This is here and now. Organizations are doing it, and it, it really can change the way you look at instruction. Yeah, I agree uh, wholeheartedly with what you're saying here. The technology is basically caught up to enable yeah. us, uh, give us the affordances for for carrying out this vision that uh, others have had. I mean, going way, way back. Yeah. So, talk to us a little bit more about some of the other people uh, that have influenced you and your work with the five moments of need and would you, yeah. you know, many people will know what that's all about, but there may be some who don't. So why don't you, uh, sure, sure. Frame us? Be happy to. Well, well, I cannot say those words without Dr. Conrad Gopperson, right? I was with element K at the time, which was an, an iteration of logical operations. The company I mentioned earlier, we were foraying into blended learning, my friend, blended learning, which we can also talk about too, because I have some, some opinions about that, but you know, we were we were we were a for profit training center, and we were trying to e learning was coming along. We were actually in the e learning business as well. Uh, applied, um, I'm sorry, uh, Element K eventually got into that world, but we had classrooms, which I was a part of, and we were struggling with the blend, and we thought we'd really come up with something kind of cool, but it wasn't working. And we brought this wonderful consultant in, Dr. Conrad Gottfriedson, and he put up on a whiteboard again. You know, you had these epiphanies, right? These full, these five moments, and I'm like, "Where's he going?" You know, this is this is. We're, we're talking about blended here. We're talking about e-learning here. We're talking about LMSs here, and you're putting this stuff. And he said, "Bob, here's the problem." He goes, "The everything you talked about is great, but it's a content pivot. All, all you're doing is rearranging the deck, the chairs in the deck of the Titanic. Um, if 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 you think you're doing blended learning because you're not, you're really doing blended training." And I was very taken back by that guy. I was like, is that semantics? Or he's like, no, no, no. There's, there, there's these five moments you need to understand. And he, so he introduced them to us. And the five, they are, number one is, is, of course, when people want to learn for the first time. A learner has a need to understand something they don't know. Totally get that, right? Probably a very primary need. Secondly, once I get some base knowledge and understand, my next need is I want to ne- learn more, right? One and two, guy, I've done them, I did them for 25 years of my life. That is what formal instruction is all about. It's served best by that. Uh, in L&D, often we think that's it, but, you know, in his infinite wisdom, and the reason why blended training was not working is Khan then pointed out that, look, the learners you're trying to serve, which were advanced learners, by the way, they're not in the new and more world anymore. They are in the real world now. Their needs have shifted to, here they come, apply and remember, need number three, 
keeping up with change, need number four, or kind of a unique one, but unique when they get into trouble and have to troubleshoot, get out of, you know, the, and he said, he's about the reality is that's learners spend the majority, this is before 70, 20, 10, all these other numbers we throw around. He said, that's where the majority of learners live. And if you look at your solution through the, through needs based, a needs based lens, you're complete, you're, no wonders no one, no one's consuming. Because, yeah, you, 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 you've, you've or rearranged content well, but you're putting it in front of a learner who has matured beyond those first needs where, you've, where you're sitting. And guess what? No one's consuming. So, you know, brilliant stuff. And, and you know, we've gone on from there. Excellent. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, my next question is about a 30-second elevator speech. And I want to pose this as... You're at a neighborhood party. There's a brand new neighbor just moved in, yeah. and they come up to you and they say, "Bob, what do you do?" So, what is your concise answer to them? Yeah, and we say we des- we design learning and performance tools that help people on the job get better at what they do. And so, if they say, "Oh, that? well, that's interesting. Tell me more. I'm in a related field here." How would yeah, you then well, expand you know, on it, that? Well, you know, we 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 design for uh, what we call the moment of apply first. So we use a tool called an EPSS or performance support to design our solutions first, and then we backfill or enhance that with training solutions if needed. Mm-hmm. So is that your product and service line? How how would you define that if you were to say? Yeah, you know, that's what, a great what's point. Your, what are your offerings? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of a combination of both, right? The service is on the side of the methodology. Uh, we spend a good part of our time in organizations like Boeing, Bank of America, Department of Defense. These are large learning enterprises that want to shift from a moments one and two, if you will, classic training, LMS-based methodology and approach to a performance-first technology slash methodology approach. And so we help them journey into the five moments methodology. That's the service, right? Mm -hmm. The product side, we have a certificate course on this and other things and tools that we've designed because uh, we want to help IDs across the globe, frankly, um, become uh, proficient at five moments. They don't have to be a part of a large enterprise like the ones I described. Um, We do no services for that. It's literally a a course offering and people uh, take the course and become, get the certificate. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about the tool that you offer. Yeah, that? well, it actually, well, it's it's called Enable, E N E B L E. We need, need acronyms in our world, right? Well, <laughs> it is our answer to Addy, if I may, guy. Okay. And this is where I may get some hate mail from your listeners, <laughs> but but uh, you know, Addy has kind of fallen flat for us in our work. I'll just speak from our perspective. I wouldn't cast that on others, but you know, we got it. It's we need a more agile model, right? And so, a tool we offer is a, a surprise, surprise, an EPSS on the enable methodology that lets designers develop in the methodology in the context of their work, you know, all the stuff we pitch, um, and it helps them with that as they go along the way. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. As a lifelong learner, Mm -hmm. what what are you currently focused on? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're focused on what we're calling workflow learning guy. And, and, and I, I, let me, let me qualify this a bit because, um, we used to be focused on performance support, and that was what we were known for back in the earlier days. And, I, you know, Con and I were the performance support guys. We even have a performance support community, which is still branded such online. If people are interested, they can, of course, follow up. It's free and the whole deal. But my point is we were, we, we were more about the tool, uh, wrongfully, we'll, we'll, I'll say, than we were about the methodology. Um, and we tried to sell performance support. And here's the thing. No one cared. Nobody, learners don't know, don't want it. They, you know, buy, and by, by that, I don't mean L&D folks. I mean, you know, the people whom we serve and sell to, mm-hmm. that's our term. That's our tool, right? So, so what we've been spending the last year or two or three on is this realigning of what we really do, which is truly workflow learning. Um, and that's what we pivot more on. Um, and that allows us also to not, the problem with performance support is, if you think about the five moments, is although we were the five moments guys, performance support best serves moments three through five. Mm-hmm. And, and again, some people came back to us and said, look, you, 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 you tout the five moments, but when you get in-house, you're all about, you know, and, and, and we get it. So workflow learning has forced us to back into the five moments where we started and understand that to truly serve a learner in their entire journey, we have to be mindful of all five moments. Designing for performance support still impacts the classroom. We were not as good at that as we should have been. And so we're really backing into the five moments, um, even though it's been around a while, 
in, in, a, in a true, uh, you know, really genuine fashion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My next question is about terminology, our language. Is, mm -hmm. is there a favorite performance improvement or learning and development or five moments of need term or phrase that you would like to define for us? And perhaps it's because you hear it being used and you're un, uh, uncomfortable with that and you'd like to put your spin on it or redefine yeah. it, what, what would you share? If you don't mind, I'd actually like to run it too. Because sure. one is because one's one that's bothering me, my friend. And you and I have these conversations all the time. Not a big micro learning fan, mm -hmm. if I may. All right. And here's why. I, I, my complaint about our, our industry is that we like terminology ahead of methodology or ahead of evidence based research. All these things, you guys. And, and, and guys, if there's anything I think we need to do in the world today is we have to we have to calm the madness. The world doesn't need another term. So I get often yelled at about this, but until you can help me understand that micro learning isn't something I'm already doing, I'm not in, I'm not in the bandwagon. So there's my, first, there's my mm -hmm. first pitch. The other, though, I will go deeper on is one I've mentioned, and that is now that we've shifted to workflow learning in the L&D space, we've really realized that it's not well understood. So let, let me let me run at it, if I may. True workflow learning from a learner's from a performer's perspective, which is where, what it should all pivot on, is learning while working guy that's very different than learning in work it, having learning available in my workspace mm -hmm. that makes sense you know so, so in other words just introducing a book to, to a tabletop behind me or an lms into my desktop that is bringing learning into my workflow but that's not typically consumed while i am working mm -hmm. see the difference workflow learning at its best is is frankly learner many i know they're doing it, it it's intrinsic it's it's contextual, it's embedded in the the, the, the workflow that I am doing, uh, and therefore it's a. I'm often asked, how do you motivate people to use workflow learning? And my answer is, if you have to ask that question, you don't get it, right? Because a learner should be inspired and naturally get why it's helpful and want to consume. Mm -hmm. So so we throw these terms around workflow learning a lot, and 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 really I want to be sure people understand the delineation is not just bringing an LMS into the workflow or anything, coach, mentor, into the workflow. Workflow learning to the learner is I'm at my desk, coaching, leading, IT, sales, fill in the blank, and in the while I am doing that, learning is presented to me and I, and I, and I use it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, our language is a mess. Uh, and uh, we, we get all these uh, newfangled terms that uh, really represent Con uh, concepts, tools, techniques that have been around for decades and uh, yeah. decades, and uh, it's a marketing spin, I think. It uh, really is. It really is, candidly. But, but, I, I there, mean, I, but, there's, but there are a need to recast some things here as technology enables us to do things yeah. and approach things differently. And so there's a there's a use for new terms, but when it's Clearly. simply a, a, a marketing spin, it, uh, it's annoying. Well, you know, my, my argument would be let's just be mindful about them. I, I don't have a, an issue with terms. I just introduced one. Workflow learning probably wasn't around, I don't know, four or five years ago. At least I didn't hear a lot of it. So, mm -hmm. so I, I, I agree that I'm going there. But my point is, let's make it intentional. Let's back it up with methodology and support. And, and let's be mindful of the landscape. How are we impacting the current ecosystem um, with, with, with bringing anything new to the table? Mm -hmm. All right. Let me shift here. We're getting uh, near the end of this interview. But uh, what I've asked you to provide for the audience here are some stories of other people that are in the business that, that had an impact on you. And these can be serious stories or they can be just a funny <laughs> anecdote, uh, whatever. But you've mentioned a couple of people to me, uh, three people actually, that you might talk about at this point here. So yep, yep. Please Let me give ahead. you two quick ones that are my favorite. One was not firsthand, but it's one I'll, I just absolutely love because I think it's just so her. They're both hers. Uh, it's going to be Allison Rossett, which uh, I do know personally and, and so admire. And then obviously Gloria Geary. Let's go in, in order, right? Gloria Geary clearly was was the beginning of this whole journey. I was a disciple, my friend. I went to all her conferences. I just I could not get enough of anything she said. Just so admired the work she would. I think you said. I think you coined it earlier. Well, that it, I think she was just a woman ahead of her time. You know, to be honest with the EPSS is back then cost a million bucks. 
and they were only about IT and green screen. You know, I mean, if you know what I mean by that, that's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, you think you right? But, but, you know, so, but here's one of my favorite stories about Gloria. She, and you can still find this if you Google it. She wrote this great little white paper called Why Don't We Just Weigh Them? And what it was about was she was, she was struggling with this whole ROI and why don't we go performance first? And I don't, because here's the thing. Uh, L&D was bringing her numbers and the numbers were, here comes, uh, who took what, how often did they attend, what tests did they pass, you know, all this kind of stuff, you know, it, quantity, not quality in her opinion. And, and so she, she basically wrote this little white paper going, look, if that's what you got, let's wait, why don't we just weigh them? And she told this funny story about, let's just put a big cattle scale out in the front of every class. And then as <laughs> learners walk in and walk out, we'll weigh them. And then we could do a pound per, per employee for, and, 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 and you know, it's, it's a chuckle. And, I, and again, you can look it up and read it. But again, talk about a woman ahead of her time, right? But she was basically saying is L and D and, and you new folks on this video, listen up. If those are your metrics, good luck with that. Because there's not a business alive that cares about that stuff. Those are all about us. Those are all about our funding. Those are all about, about you know, elevating our programs. And if I'm a line of business owner, I don't care, right? So we got to wake up to that. And she was one of the first to really challenge us. Next, real quick, Allison Rossett. Just read her book, right? I, I, you know, I kind of, I've written one since, but just read our book, her book, and I, and I, and it's, it's sort of rebirthing in me, Gloria, right? Gloria had moved on in the industry, and Allison's sort of stepping in at San Diego State at the time. She writes this performance support book, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, it, it, it's, it's back, you know, and it's better, you know. So I had dinner with her in San Diego, and I'm about, and I'm, I'm, I'm about to launch my own consulting business, and so I'm kind of giving her my pitch, right? And I'm, oh, I'm doing all this cool stuff, and. Performance support, PS, PS, performance, all over the place. She goes, Bob, wait, wait, can I stop you? She goes, here's the thing. She goes, I never use the word performance support. I'm like, Allison, you, you, you wrote the book. She goes, yeah, 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 I'll, fine. You know, for us, that's great. But in L&D, sure, we have to have terminology. I get it. But if you're going to go into a company, do not use the word performance support or informal learning. Never use informal learning. I was like, well, why? She goes, here's the thing. Try to get a CFO to pay for informal learning, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and guy, I was like, Hmm, you know, here and, and look at, look at the, look at the similarity in both of them, right? These are two women that didn't go after Addie, didn't go after, you know, us pontificating on our research and our, in our behavioral objectives and blah, blah, blah. And she said, those are two women that understand if we're going to stand on our merits, it has to be about performance. If we can't prove what, and, and this is for all you out there, particularly new, here's what a buddy of mine says. If you're building something that doesn't change performance that you can prove, stop building it because it's a waste of time, money, effort, right? So, so think about that, friends, when you're out there. Now, it's a challenge. I get it. But come on. This, it is really the business that we're in. Two tremendous ladies, two great stories. I've never forgotten them. Thank you. Yes. Are you going to share anything more about uh, your business partner, Con? Uh, no, I'll, I'll sort of keep. He'll, he'll tell me if I do. <laughs> All right. No, I <laughs> understand that. Those great folks. <laughs> Bob, thanks so much for agreeing to do this interview with me. Uh, as a final question, do you have any parting words of wisdom or guidance, especially for new people coming yeah. in? What 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 would you share with them? I'm going to I'm going to go at a sacred cow, my friend, um, which make great burgers. I once heard it's a, which is a terrific book. Um, if you're coming out of L&D school, uh, you're probably you're probably kind of eddyized and the whole deal um, kind of thing. Let me let me challenge. Let me disrupt your world for a minute. Design for performance, per, performance first, training second. It sounds weird, but any L&D professional who's going down the traditional route, frankly, is not doing that. They're designing, when someone walks in their office, they utter these words, and we're really excited when they do, I'd like five days of training on blah, blah, blah. And we are already thinking class, lesson, e-learning, right? And then maybe a job aid if there's time. That is not performance first instruction. You should think first, if, imagine if you designed the, the perfect, you know, mousetrap, you know, or, or, you know, I always say the example I've heard used is, you know, if you, if you put, you know, someone in swimmies or a, or a life, life jacket, would you teach swimming differently? Right? Well, that's kind of where we're going. You guys, if you build the quintessential performance tool 
for the performance problem you're challenged to solve, the training you surround it with will be remarkably different, right? So performance first, training second. Thank you so much for that. Here, here. Preach <laughs> it, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Bob, again, yeah. thanks so much for sharing with us today. And uh, I wish you a good day and a good week and a good remaining uh, rest of your career. You too, friend. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me. Glad to be here.